message this morning. In John 10, verse 10, and before we turn, I just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you from myself and Sister Linda. We love you guys. You guys are really, really terrific, and we really, really appreciate you. And um, we thank God for you every day. Amen? Praise the Lord. John 10.10, 10, would you please, Pastor, put that up on the screen for me. The Bible says the thief comes not but for to kill, steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I was wondering, can you put that on the amplified version for me? The thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Amen. The thief is the devil, Satan himself. He's the one that comes and steals your life. Now, what happens a lot of times is we don't realize that and sometimes we're deceived. A lot of people think Christians are deceived, but you know what? They're the actual ones that are deceived because the light of the gospel has shed abroad upon our hearts, and we are the ones who see the truth. You can only know the truth if you know Jesus, because truth came by him. Uh, some don't agree with that, but uh, when we stand all eternity before God, we'll know who's the truth and who's not. Amen? I mean, you've you got to know that. Uh, I can tell you by experience that I know that God lives, and I know that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Uh, if you read the Bible, you'll see there are over 500 witnesses that, writ that actually witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So 500 witnesses in a court of law, all you need is two or three, and you get conviction. So uh, we know from historical, factual information, not some mystical hope so, hope so, think so. We as Christians believe the historical Jesus Christ. We believe, I, in fact, uh, Linda and I, we were in Jerusalem, we were in Israel, and I was in the tomb that Jesus was in. It was uh, Joseph of Amathea's uh, tomb that he gave to Jesus to be buried in. And I can tell you, he isn't there. Hallelujah. And uh, I'll tell you, there's a presence of God in that place in Israel. And um, I just want to say that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. And if you really know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, um, I'll tell you, there's no other way to live. Uh, some over 35 years ago, I was, um, I was a heathen. I was a drug abuser. I was an alcoholic. My friend Joe here, who I've known for over 40 years, can testify to you of the kind of lifestyles we lived, things we did, the parties we went to. Um, took 35 years of my prayers to get him saved, but he's finally here. And I'll tell you, uh, for those of you who don't think that God can save an intellectual, my friend has been to Harvard. He has, he's been in the physics major. He is a very, very intelligent man. He's not stupid. And I'll tell you, uh, it took a while, but for him to be fully convinced that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And I thank God that God answered my prayers. And uh, I testify to you that that's my friend. I've known him for over 40 years. Uh, we grew up together, played army together, got dirty together, did a lot of crazy things together. And he saw my life over the years, and, and he called me one day and told me, he says, I, I want you to come to Boston. He was in Boston. He works, uh, well, he wasn't working at the time, but uh, uh, he works in the banks, banking industry. And he said, I need to talk to you about God. And he had so many questions, and every question he said, I answered not because I was smarter than he was, but just that, you know, when God gives you the answers to, to life's questions, and he saw my life, he saw how I've traveled around the world preaching this gospel, believing this gospel, seeing people saved, healed, and delivered. And I'll tell you, you cannot thwart that kind of experience. And so um, I'm sure for many years the thief came and robbed him and stole from him. And, uh, of course, he was in the higher education bracket. And he was in these uh, schools uh, where their philosophies and their ideologies are anti-God. But you know something? 
I can tell you one, one person who's greater than all of the scholastic ideologies and philosophies, and that's the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit touched him. And I want to say this, that God changed his life. He went from no job, all bankrupt, no money, no place to live. And uh, God turned his life around, and now he's, he's a, uh, what are you doing now? He, he's, a, he's a senior credit analyst for a bank in uh, Cambridge, Mass. Um, and um, Amen. God, you know, God doesn't want you to give up your brain. Amen? And I thank God for that. Uh, and I thank God that, you know, he's, he's always stood by me and always encouraged me, especially when I was getting my degrees. Uh, he always was there cheering me on, you know. When he found out I had received an honorary doctorate, he was really, really pleased. I had him come and speak at my, my uh, ordination of that. And so, you know what? God is good. And I, I just want to encourage you today during this Christmas season. Don't let this Christmas season go by with just a little plastic baby in a little manger. You know, Jesus is alive. He's real. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. And he can, he can change your life if you want to. And, you know, I know there's people that laugh, and I know that there's people that mock, and that's okay. You know, and, oh, by the way, we're on Facebook. We're all over the world, believe it or not. We're seen in China. We're seen in Indonesia. We're seen in India right now. Oh, and I want to say, uh, Pastor Sajiv said to say, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. He sends his greetings in, Niger in, uh, in uh, India and uh, Bangalore. And uh, we'll be going there next year, God's, by God's grace. Um, and we, he said that uh, he needed uh, some, um, some help next February for a campaign that he's doing. And I want you to understand, he is reaching these villages. Now, if this is crazy and this is not real, why are these people doing this? 250 villages have never heard the name Jesus before. And he is sacrificing his life, going to the poorest of the poor to... Um, to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And so uh, we sent him a little gift uh, for Christmas that he could uh, bless some people, and 28 souls came to Jesus. So that's all on your account. You'll all get, you'll all get blessed in heaven for that. And so um, don't let the thief steal from you anymore. Don't let him rob you anymore. And uh, I could tell you testimony and testimony of people in this church that have come broken, needing, needing Christ. Um, and it's not just because they need something. But God has a call on each and every one of us to come to Him for peace and joy. You know, we sing about peace and joy. We sing about the carols and all those things. But it doesn't mean a thing if it's not in you. Because you can walk around this life being the most miserable person you can go on you can go to the parties, you can be the life of the party, man. You can have a smile on your face. But when you're sitting all alone in your bedroom and you're hurting and you're in pain in life because you don't have the answers, let me tell you something. Jesus has the answer for you. Amen. So I just want to close in prayer and I, I want to just thank you for coming this morning and watching the children. They're always a blessing. Amen. Amen. And it's good to see Gordon. God bless you, brother. And your daughter, she's gotten so tall, I can't believe it. I'm telling you, and, uh, and uh, good to see Olivia. And, and uh, I remember when she was this little, she came, and, and uh, you, you guys just make me look old. And uh, so let's all stand in closing in prayer. And Brenda, God bless you. Nice to have you with us this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Father, now I pray, God, your Holy Spirit, will speak to people's hearts. Lord, that you're, that you're more than just you're more than just a figure or you know of someone's imagination. You're just you know, you're more than just a statue. You're more than all of those things. That you're real and that you came and you suffered and you died. You were born to come into the world to save all mankind. And so Father, thank you for sending your son. Thank you for resurrecting him from the dead. Thank you for the work of the cross 
that all of our sins are forgiven, Lord, and yet you change our nature so that we would please you and walk in your ways. And I pray for each and every one here today that, Lord, somehow, some way, you'll become more real to them than ever before. We love you and we thank you for this holiday season. Lord, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you that you were born. We thank you that you died. We thank you that you were resurrected and that you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And we thank you, God, that Jesus Christ is coming back again. And we praise you this morning. Now bless your people as they go. Give them traveling mercies and surround them with your holy angels and protect them as they go. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you this morning. Give the Lord a clap offering.